Hi guys, today I wanted to do a follow-up video on this Lavolta BPS 305 Mark II benchtop power supply. The first video was the teardown, now let's do the review. But first up, I need to admit that in my last video I overlooked something pretty obvious, and it's that the second unit I ordered actually did arrive damaged. And if you pay attention you can see the damage in the first video, but I only noticed it after I was done making the video. Let's take a look. You can see that the right bottom corner is pushed in fairly fine to the housing. The front panel itself is bent and the corner of the metal housing pushed through the plastic about a centimeter deep. The metal casing is bent on the side here and also the paint is chipped off right at the corner. This is probably where the impact happened. And the bottom plate is also bent outwards here. This was most likely caused by the heavy weight of the transformer. It's a bit difficult to show but you can clearly see that there is a bulge here. And the packaging also shows clear signs of damage. Like the foam insert is damaged on the corresponding corner down in here. You can see a divot. And there's also signs of damage on the inside. And I can actually put my pen through it. You can see it comes out the other side. And the cardboard packaging itself is also damaged on the same corner. Look how far back this was pushed in. And there is also a hole, probably where the power supply punched through it. It looks like this was a fairly substantial impact. It was probably dropped during shipment on its corner. I don't think it's really fair of me to test or review a damaged product, but I'm really curious to see if it actually still works. If you remember, the Huaco power supply also was damaged during shipment and didn't work when it arrived. Can the LaVolta Mark II do better? Let's take a look. Since it was damaged, first let's check if the device is safe to use. For that I got this Benning ST710 device tester. It covers the DIN 0701 or 0702. It is not calibrated, but as you can see it is like new. And so far I have no reason to mistrust it. Usually it's the other way around. In a professional environment you need good reasons to trust your gear. Like a good manufacturer, a good documentation, a certification or calibration documents, maintenance records and so on. But I don't have that kind of money lying around so this will have to do. Let's check the mains wires first. For that we turn it on, then wait a bit till it boots up, then plug the mains wire in. And there is another plug up top, this one goes in here. And then we start the cable procedure. It's doing its thing, measuring the resistance and the isolation. So it measures the earth wire resistance and it has to be low enough and it measures the isolation resistance. This has to be high enough and as you can see the cable is good. It passed and we can test the power supply itself. We unplug it from the top, plug into the power supply. Then we have to turn the power supply on since this has a metal casing we can also attach the ground probe so we attach the ground probe up to here and then clamp it to ground and then we start the device test you can see it's doing its thing measuring the protective earth resistance the isolation resistance and it's a pass once again. So this seems to be safe to plug in. Now that doesn't mean that it won't immediately blow up if I plug it into the mains, but that it won't harm me if I do plug it in. Probably. <laughs> so let's find out, plug it in and turn it on. Let's see if it blows up. Uh, hey, it works. And the first thing you notice is the fan. It is always on, so no thermal regulation for the fan, which was obvious from the teardown. The fan is loud. It's not unbearably so, but it isn't exactly silent either. I can put my microphone close to it so you can hear for yourself. Yeah, it's not that silent. Yeah, we will definitely have to do something about that, but that's going to be the next video, so subscribe to my channel if you don't want to miss that. Now it is running. But nothing is happening when I turn the knobs. You see, the display doesn't change, so... Uh, is it actually damaged? Or oh, what's going on in here? Ah, uh, maybe I have to engage the output first, so let's try that. Ah, uh, here we go. And it works. So yeah, great. 
even though it is badly damaged as you can see down here it still worked so good job la volta i guess it seems to be working but it definitely needs an indicator to show if the output is engaged or not an led or something this is just a bit confusing you have to guess if the output is not engaged like this or is it just set to zero like this that's not obvious in all circumstances i think it definitely needs an output on status indicator so you know at a fast glance if this thing is on or off and no setting it to zero is not the same as turning off the output speaking of indicators there are still no markings on the knobs so you have no clue where you are on the scale if i want to slightly adjust the voltage can i turn that fine knob to the right uh, no i can't i'm already at the limit so i have to use the coarse knob first go up and then use the fine knob to go down a bit like 3.3 volts for example or what about the amperage is it set to 100 milliamps or 1 amp or 5 amp i have no clue from just looking at it i would have to short circuit the output and then adjust the value that i need i guess if you had some indicator markings you could just from a glance know where you are roughly on the scale are you in the milliamps region or are you at the far end at 5 amps and it'll be just so much more usable with just a few indicators yeah this will be so annoying during use and i will definitely have to do something about that the transformer types are switched at 6.9 volts 14.3 volts and the next one is at 19.8 volts as i remember the previous version switched the tabs at 7.5 15 and 21 volts the maximum no load voltage is 31.9 volts and i think that dropped from 32.8 volts these changes might be the result of the redesigned power board which now has a higher voltage drop or they may be left out a few windings of the transformer to cut on production costs because copper is very expensive these days as you can see the display is fairly accurate but if you needed to adjust it, you could do this with these trimmers here. But it's not necessary here, so great job that it's fairly well adjusted. For the next test, I would like to do a worst case scenario thermal load test. For that, I will attach my electronic loads, adjust the output voltage to 20 volts, so it's definitely using the fourth tab on the transformer. I think this will be the use case with the highest thermal load because the regulating transistors in here have to dissipate 10 volts at 5 amps and dump these 50 watts of energy into the heatsink right in front of the fan. I will set that up, I will then let it run for an hour to really heat soak it in and then come back and check the temperatures with this thermal imaging camera. As you can see everything is set up, start the timer and come back after an hour and see what's going on. As you can see it now has been over an hour, an hour and 10 minutes and the power supply has been running at 20 volts and roughly 5 amps and the ambient room temperature is 23 and a half degrees and now let's use the thermal imaging camera to check the temperatures of the power transistors and the rectifier and they're showing 118 degrees so almost exactly the same temperature as before ah, 122 so this hot spot down in here is the rectifier which is in here and you can see it through the slits uh, 125 27 28 that's quite hot actually if i remember correctly that's just a few degrees celsius lower than the previous version of this power supply where the rectifier was just mounted to the bottom of the metal case and got up to 132 degrees as i remember correctly 129 almost 130 so i'm not sure what's going on in here that's actually not that great for a redesigned board let's see if there are any other hotspots on this board yeah but like besides the power transistors and the rectifier which are down there i don't see anything especially hot in here well yeah the transformer but nothing incredible let's see if the case has any hot spots like the bottom of the case is at 56 degrees 59 almost 60 so the transformer still makes it quite hot but it's not as bad as it was before where it was up to like 80 degrees celsius so this isn't that bad so the bottom is at 60 degrees 
Yeah, it's toasty, but you can touch it, so it's not that bad. You can leave your hand for a few seconds on there. I have to say I'm quite disappointed with these results. As we saw, the power transistors got up to 180 degrees and the rectifier mounted directly to the heatsink got to about 130 degrees. I saw 129 degrees and that's really disappointing. This is just a marginal improvement over the previous version, whereas you remember the rectifier was just mounted to the bottom of the case. And I guess the only plus side is that the case itself doesn't get up to 80 degrees anymore. But considering thermal improvement, they haven't made any progress at all. I mean, corrected for the ambient room temperature, which was around 24 degrees. And as I remember, the ambient room temperature before was 26 degrees because I did it a little bit later and it was hotter. So if you correct for the ambient room temperature, those are exactly the same values. 132 before at 26 degrees ambient room temperature and 130 degrees at 24 degrees ambient room temperature. So they haven't made any progress at all. This is just so disappointing. They missed a great opportunity to improve and yeah you will definitely have to do something about that so this is definitely a thumbs down for missing our great opportunity to improve love to come on thermal design isn't that difficult i actually wanted to check the ripple performance of this power supply but after this poor thermal performance i actually can't be bothered i mean nobody who buys this power supply buys it for its great ripple performance or for any other regulating specs you buy this only because of the price and if you actually need a low ripple power supply you probably won't even think about buying this ah what the hell i'm not gonna leave you hanging i like my viewers so let's try to measure the ripple anyway the setup i got isn't really suitable for what i'm trying to do because measuring the ripple or noise of a power supply is actually quite a big pain in the ass and you need proper differential probes i can't even do the poor man's differential probes it will have to do the easiest way possible with an antenna attached so this won't be the most precise measurement but i'm gonna do what i can with what i got here so let's take a look at the setup i disconnected the electronic loads because they can produce noise also and feed that back and i don't want to measure that so i installed a power resistor it's 4.7 ohms and i screwed it directly to the terminals and also installed the plate to tie the negative terminal to ground and attach the probe to the oscilloscope so let's set that up coupling i'm gonna change to ac bandwidth to 20 megahertz then let's do acquisition is gonna be peak detect because i'm gonna measure the peaks let's set it up what's our division 500 millivolts yeah let's go to like one millivolt per division this is just ambient noise caught by this lead so let's take a look at what the manufacturer promises. For currents below 3 amps, they promise 0.01% plus 3 millivolts. I doubt those specs are true. Let's see what we actually have here. So I'm gonna turn on the power supply now. Use the power supply. Let's turn that on and see what we get. So this resistor is drawing 700 milliamps at 3.3 volts. That's a common voltage for embedded systems and i'm just curious what it, what we get here so let's see mm. okay i don't think we have to stay in the micro volt the range let's turn that up let's stay here at 20 millivolts What do we have? Yeah, look at that. The mean is at 20 millivolts. <laughs> yeah, right, 3 millivolts. Way out of the specs it promises, but for the price you pay, that's okay. As I said, nobody will not buy this power supply because of the ripple, and anybody who needs a low ripple power supply won't even think about buying this one. So, here we go, at 3.3 volts and 700 milliamps drawn, it produces a noise of 20 millivolts. This is the best I could do and really I didn't have to worry so much because the ripple is so big 
You can't miss it. <laughs> Look at that, if I turn off the power supply. Everything's gone. So, what's my verdict? I kinda like this redesigned Levolta BPS 305 Mark II power supply. It does what it's supposed to do at a very low price point. But other than that, I'm actually quite disappointed that they missed a great opportunity to improve the thermal design. And they also didn't do anything about the other issues it has. Like there are still no markings on the knobs, so you have no clue where you are on your scale. And that makes it annoying to use. There is no output status indicator. And you can't really see what's going on only by the position of the switch itself. Because the travel is so small. It needs to be obvious at a glance. This will also be annoying during use. And probably the worst thing about it is that they run the mains wire directly underneath the power board and the sharp burrs on the pins so they can touch and possibly rub the insulation through. Check out my teardown video for more details on that. This is a potential hazard. If things go very wrong this could send mains voltage directly to the output. This will probably damage the attached device and can hurt or kill the user. And honestly, that's not that great. I will probably also have to do something about that risk. It's probably not that difficult to fix, just install a separator board or something like that or run the wires properly. All in all, that's an okay power supply if you can't afford anything else. But you can once again clearly see that they build it as cheap as possible. I think that's gonna be it for this video. If you have any questions or comments, you know how YouTube works. Actually, since YouTube, I mean corporate tube, is hell-bent on getting rid of me and all other small independent content creators, I think it is time to go and use alternatives like Library or BitChute. So from now on I will be releasing my videos on Library first, at least a week before I upload to corporate tube. So subscribe to me on library.tv for the latest videos. And thank you for watching this video. I'll see you another time. Bye.